This is part two of the iPhone 7 and Plus waterproof test. As per the Apple IP67 standard, this is only splash and water resistant. The purpose of this test is to see what lengths we can take the iPhone 7 to. Now in the first part, I'm using cooking oil, pumpkin and vegetable soup. I've attached the phone to a drill, try and simulate as much turbulence and try to get as much grit and liquid everywhere. Now throughout this video, you're going to see it's a bit sped up. I did spend a few minutes on each of the liquids on the phone and I did my best to try and immerse the whole phone in as much as possible. Now as you can see on the LCD screen there was no leaks. The touch screen is working. I was intermittently testing it in between dips and there were no notices of uh, actual changes. Not even the digitizer was actually triggering itself while it was in the actual uh, vegetable soup. Next up is maple syrup. This is probably the most viscous out of all the liquids that was used in the test. Did take time to pour in. Now with this test, I could only spend a few minutes on it as the actual drill and iPhone were struggling to spin around in it due to the, the thick nature of it. Uh, before I did this test, I thought this liquid was going to do the most damage. It was actually uh, surprising where there was no triggering of the digitizer once again. Uh, everything worked fairly usual in the, the iPhone with no visible liquid damage to the LCD screen. I put the flashlight on just to see if that, uh, you know, would turn off, but uh, eventually got annoying, so I had to, to turn that off. Next up is uh, soda, in particular Coca-Cola. The reason I use this material was uh, in previous water damage phones I have seen, uh, there was always either red wine or, or cola that seemed to leave a massive stain. So if there was a leak, it would be obvious to see within the phone upon opening it up after the experiment. And as you can see, once again, there is no visible signs of damage or leak to the LCD screen, no triggering of the digitizer. Everything seemed to work fairly normal. Okay, next up is another viscous material, which is dishwashing detergent and concentrate. Obviously people do drop their phone into the sink. Now I doubt that there'll be a situation where it'll be dropped into pure concentrate, but in this case, what I've done is immerse the iPhone 7 into pure concentrate and spun it around. Now in this case, you can see I wasn't covering the, the top of the camera as much as I, I wanted to, so throughout the actual experiment, I was moving the liquid over the camera to try and cover it. Throughout this experiment, what I wanted to do is ensure that places like the ear speaker, the bottom speakers, the camera, and the button were immersed as much as possible. Now this test is obviously beer. There have been situations where people have spilt their beer, red wine, alcoholic beverage while out all over the phone, so I thought it'd be good to try and immerse it into beer. The beer that was used was a home brew where it was eventually green. In other words, it was off, so it was undrinkable and obviously uh, non-wasted. Now there was trouble trying to trigger the touch screen there, just due to the fact that when there's liquid on there, it can't feel your fingerprint. 
or your finger, should I say, but once I, I dried it out, everything was working in a very nominal way and there was no issues whatsoever, no indications of uh, leaking through the LCD screen. Now on the other spectrum of uh, probably the most least viscous uh, liquid that was used was paint thinners or turpentine. Now hopefully that uh, I thought that it would possibly leak through and show on the LCD screen. Still once again, Apple once again impressed with not one sign of any leak. The digitizer worked fine, the button worked fine, and there were no issues. This test is obviously salt water. What I did was put uh, just table salt in a jar, mixed it with water, try and simulate sea salt in the event someone did drop their phone at the beach. Once again, everything seems fine with this. There were no issues, it was tested. The button, the digitizer, the LCD screen worked fairly normally. Now this uh, was probably the most interesting test of it all. I really thought that if there was any damage to be done, it would be through the, the hot coffee. As you can see, it's really hot. Pouring it over there did nothing whatsoever. It did trigger the digitizer. I think that was just from the pressure and from the heat. There was no indication of, of heat marks on the LCD screen, which was really surprising. I did leave it in there but, uh, for a bit of time. You can see the digitizer jumping around there. I was thinking possibly there was damage. However, once again, really impressed. Everything was working fine. The only thing that I noticed was the actual phone getting hot. So I do think it's safe to say that if you were to spill your coffee cup or, or teacup and you did dry it quickly, it'd be fine. Now this is a shower water positive pressure test. The reason I did this was is that um, obviously a jet type of, of test makes a difference. Also the garden hose jet. I really got into the speakers the ear speaker, the home button there with the positive pressure of the of a garden jet hose. And once again, I was really impressed that there was no indication of any type of water leaking in. Uh, the, obviously, the po positive pressure did trigger the digitizer. That wasn't damaged in any way. It was working normally. Now for the internal examination. Upon opening it, there's one thing that's noted is that obviously throughout the frame of the phone, Apple has put these water seals. Uh, I did heat it up with a heat gun to try and make it easy to lift off. Amazingly, it, it still is very hard to, to pry off. You, you do feel like you might even break the LCD screen. There's a heat mark from the heat gun at the bottom. Now, uh, upon opening it, I did notice a few things. Now, if you look right at the bottom there, you'll see that there's two watermarks. The one on the right is from the molasses, or the, sorry, the golden syrup. And the one on the left is, I would assume, uh, from, from what it was, was from the jet of the garden hose going in. Now this is a really important indication showing that the phone can attain water within it. There we go on the right. And on the left, they're the two parts. Now, coincidentally enough, that's where the bottom speaker mesh is and where the charging port is. So it is safe to say that this, as per Apple's advice, it is water and splash resistant, but it'd be very silly to assume that it could take uh, a heavy beating like the one I, I have given it in this experiment. Once again, I'm very impressed. It did survive. And one final thing I'd like to say is that water does like to get into everywhere when left on a surface. So it's very important that when you do wet your device, 
you follow the Apple instructions on how to dry it, and it's probably best that any electronic device, including the iPhone 7, is kept well away from any type of liquid. Thank you once again for watching this video. Please subscribe below and like this video.